And the reality is Jesus is an expression of the Father, the perfect expression of the Father. He and the Father are one, you know, and that that is really the relationship we engage in so that we can know that we're also one with him. And he's in us and we're in him. And you have this amazing intimate relationship of being in I am, you know, therefore I am in I am. Because I begin to find revelation of who I am within I am which is exactly what Jesus was talking about in John 14. You know, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to prepare you to be this dwelling place. And that where I am, you may be also. You know, where was he? In the Father. And the Father was him. And then in, I think it's verse 19, it says, on that day, you're going to know. You're going to know. They didn't know up to that point. They only heard what he said. None of them have experienced that Jesus was in them and they were in him and they were all in the father. None of them had experienced that at that moment until on the day of resurrection, he appears in the upper room and he breathes on them and he says, receive the spirit. And then they knew on that day, you will know that I'm in you and you're in me. Yeah, you will know. Yeah, not, you know, I'm going to tell you about it and you'll read books about it and you'll discover intellectual knowledge about it. No, you will know on that day. And they did. And therefore the whole of mankind was rebirthed on that day. The whole of mankind were indwelt by the Holy Spirit on that day. And that revelation is what, the father sought to occur the spirit of truth would reveal that all of those people were now included in jesus and that jesus the holy spirit but were included in them looking to reveal themselves so that they could experience that you know just as paul decreed on the, the damascus road you know as he expressed what happened to him father was pleased to reveal his son in me because paul encountered on the damascus road what had happened on the day of resurrection and yet all of that time he had been resisting by following his own religious rules and own mind so he had been resisting what god was trying to do in revealing himself in paul and he was kicking against it, fighting for his own religious rights to do it his way. And all of a sudden, it was like, well, who are you, Lord? You know, well, I'm Jesus. And it's just like, bang, boom. And every one of his other past life experiences of religion and being a Pharisee and being a, a Jew and being this, that and the other were like, as his you know, the polite version of his expression was they were dung. You know, nothing amounted to anything when he had that revelation that Jesus was in him. And he was in Jesus, included in what Jesus had done. You know, and he'd been resisting it all his life, basically. You know, and ultimately the revelation came through the experience of engaging with the truth the light the revelation of that and experiencing that jesus was at work in him and as soon as he surrendered to the work in him everything changed everything you know and and that's unfortunately where a lot of people are today god is exactly the same looking to reveal himself in people unveil his, his love and they are either ignoring, doing it their own way, feeling guilty or condemned or not good enough for God, or trying to do, earn God's favor through religious effort and work and works, whether they're Hindus or Muslims or anything else. There's something you have to do. You know, um, and they're caught up in that doing. Which is just a work which wears them out, basically. And the people end up weary. Now, obviously, those who were following the old covenant religion and were trying to follow the law were 
extremely weary and tired trying to perform it and be good enough because they could never be good enough through their own efforts, which was why the revelation was so amazing. Hey, you don't have to be good enough. I've made you righteous. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ. How did that happen? Because that is what Jesus did through the finished work of the cross and his grace and mercy and love. He made us righteous. Therefore, we have the ability to enter into the presence of God. But we're kept from it by our own minds. We're alienated from the promises and the truth by our own thinking. Whether that is, oh, I'm, I'm guilty, I'm, can, I'm not good enough, God could never yeah, have me in his presence, you know, or, yeah, I need, to, I need to do this or that, offer this or do this or perform this or whatever it might be, you know, and that keeps us from the very thing which actually is already operating in us. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.